episode two. If you haven't watched episode one, you might want to go check it out. I have the fortunate experience to have two E30 M3s, one a Sport Evo, the other, uh, I guess you could say a base E30 M3, which isn't base anymore. Uh, but my friend Drew from Enthusiast Auto Group, you can go see these cars on their website. Uh, go to EAG, I think it's enthusiastauto.com. Just Google Enthusiast Auto Group BMW and you'll find their site. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, but he let me sort of borrow own, you know, we'll say borrow for as long as I need, or unless one of you guys buy one of these cars, uh, the E30s to experience, to live with, to detail, to modify, to do what I do. Uh, and so we came up with a great idea where I don't have to pay $400,000 to own two of them to see which one I like. I get to borrow them, spend some of my uh, labor capital and uh, using all my cool stuff on them, dial them in, make them look awesome, and then give them back when I'm done. And then shoot, if, if he, you know, maybe if I fall in love with them, one of them, maybe I'll keep it. So anyway, this is the decon package. Now, I was just looking, I spent, few hundred hours over the last uh, last month or so going back through all of my detailing stuff I made a series with some of my friends Pan the organizer a rad garage Corey from car pro I'll probably do it with a few other guys uh, on sort of sussing out or looking at my detailing process and giving me some suggestions what am I missing uh, and uh, and so in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I would decon a car using the exact products that I like and use and I guess technically recommend. Uh, and then I'll probably throw in some testing of some of the new stuff. I've started to order some of the stuff that, that, that my friends have suggested. So uh, we'll be doing some, some testing to see, you know, is, is uh, Iron Buster the way to go or should I be using something else? Is, uh, you know, Rio's engine cleaner the way to go or should I use something else? So. I don't want to scare you away here. I, I am in a position in life where, and many of you are too, where I just want the, the best. And I don't, you know, I don't really care what it costs anymore. Plus, I'm cheating because this is what I do for a living. So this package here, excluding these last three things, this is uh, 730 bucks, something like that. Now, you don't need all of this. There's gallon replacements. I mean, this Tarex gallon is like 90 bucks. You know, we don't need all of this stuff. There's also press-all bottles, which I have over on my cart. Uh, but for, I think the base price of the ultimate package is 630, but when you add towels and you add press-all bottles, uh, it ends up being about, I think, 730 to get the exact stuff that I have in my cabinet that I use uh, I'm always replacing, always changing this stuff, uh, and we you know, keep our packages available for people to click the button. Now, I've also created and gone back and revisited, and we created a basic and advanced version of this. The basic version, to do what I'm about to do, you need, it's like 170 bucks worth of stuff. Uh, and that would probably be enough to do three or four decons. Uh, and so if you're just starting out, I don't want to scare you away with a $700 decon package. Uh, if you go to obsessedgarage.com, we'll put the links, we'll put it in the cards uh, so you can go and, and see the packages. But the base package is 170 bucks, then it's like 400 and then it's like 630 and then you can add the, the accessories to it. I want to make it simple and easy. I'm going to be spending a lot of time on uh, simplifying things for you guys so you know what to do. Notice Kosh Kemi, Car Pro, Kosh Kemi, PNS, uh, B&B, or you know, Obsessed Garage, Griot's Garage, Solo, Rag Company, McKee's, P21S, all different brands, all different products, Detail Factory, uh, Rag Company, you know, you, we have stuff, Adams, Griot's, I mean, we've, I'm, I'm aggregating products. The goal here is to curate and put together a package that I think is it's the best that I know of uh, at the moment, and I've tried a whole lot of stuff, and I'm about to go try a whole a bunch more stuff. I do this every couple of years, reassessing the, the process. The product is important, but the process is more important, and so what I'm going to show you here today is the process. A couple of things that aren't in the detailing package or the decom package just because it fits somewhere else. Uh, P21S polishing soap, which we may use on the exhaust tips, uh, and then McKee's N N N914, and I'll be sure to let you know if there's anything else that I grab in this sort of log of us uh, deconning the car. I'll be sure to put it in the, in the description so you'll know what to get. The reason I built the Access Garage website was because of the darn description on YouTube, and uh, I wanted to make it easy for people so you can go click the button. 
Because there's a lot of parts and pieces in this, and because I'm aggregating it from all over the world, a lot of times you'll see reserve your spot. Don't let that scare you away. We always have stuff coming in, uh, so I like to keep inventory accurate, and so sometimes it'll go into what's called reserve your spot. Uh, what will happen is we'll ship what we have, uh, and then when the other thing, like we may be even missing a pop top or something like that, and that could throw it out of stock. So don't let that scare you away. Make sure place the order. It helps me out a lot. You know, helps me do these crazy things and show you what we what we can and can't do in detailing. And um, yeah, appreciate your support. So the first car I'm doing is the E30. So this is a 92,000 mile single stage paint. I'm almost certain single stage paint uh, E30 M3. Uh, this is a pretty darn good looking example. Uh, and I'm gonna start with detailing this. So when you're detailing, uh, when you're polishing, when you're doing the interior, I wanna do engine bay first, then decon, get everything or anything off the paint, iron, contaminants, get it ready to polish. So today's job for me, and I always like to decon standalone. Uh, I'm fortunate that I can keep the car on the lift, that I can do this for a living, um, not detailing for, for time or money, uh, and so I can make this process last a week or so. Uh, so today's job is to decon it. I like to decon it the day before, the night before, uh, that way I can get it on the lift, let it dry, and then we'll tape it and start getting it ready for, for polishing tomorrow. So let's get this puppy outside and uh, I'll talk about some of the products I'm going to be using. I don't know why I just walked around in a circle like that. I could have just turned around and opened the door. Alright, I'm going to turn off my presentation voice and go in a normal voice. I don't know what I'm doing here. but <laughs> So I did drive this thing. I pretty much hate it. <laughs> yeah, it pretty much sucks. I think you could probably make it fun. You know, brakes, suspension, stereo. Um, I think the, the Sport Evo has a decent stereo and I gotta test that out. I gotta buy a C, I don't have a CD, I gotta get one. Um, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, it's 192 horsepower. It's, um, you know, steering ratio is okay. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, it, this wasn't my car. Like I was too young, this is 1989, right? 1987 when they launched these, right? And so I'm seven years old. I mean, I, I was into my dad's GTO at the time, you know, muscle cars or American cars, because that's what everybody had around us. I didn't get into M3s until, um, you know, 16, 17, 18. Actually, it was the 850 Ci that I thought was the coolest car. That was my screensaver and my compact Presario. It wasn't this. Because what's better than a three? It's an eight, right? You know, when you're 14 years old or 12 years old. So I don't have any, like the E36, I have some nostalgia for, so I'm willing to deal with it. By the way, my frickin' window broke, and so the window won't go down. <laughs> Part of ownership. Oh, there's little tweeters in the pod here. I wonder if that's, I think it's stock. Stop take that stock tape deck. So I think if I was nostalgic about this, maybe I'd be more inclined to be interested in it. Now we're right on the edge, I think, of being able to do this safely with a car that's this old. Uh, and um, I don't, we don't have any, you know, maybe a, a generation older would have issues with like drip rails and stuff like that. I think we can decon this just like normal. Uh, this is probably the oldest car I've ever, I've ever messed with, right? I don't think I've ever messed with anything older. So this is an 89. So let's assess. So when I'm deconning, I always like to do the engine bay first. So I think it could use a little, little dial in. Little Maddie clean up and some some hyper dressing. By the way, hyper dressing's coming back to the store. Uh, it should be back in a week or so. Uh, so I think I'm going to a new new engine cover here. I think I'm gonna roll it. Where's the intake? Intake's down there, so we don't have to worry about that. Battery's in the trunk, so we don't have to worry about covering anything up. Um, so we're gonna. You know, gently clean this up. In most cars, you're safe. Shoot, you're almost safer on a car of this age than you are on a, on a new car. But uh, you know, you can 
use the pressure washer and, and clean this thing out. So I'm gonna do Griot's engine cleaner, and then we're gonna follow with um, hyperdressing, diluted four to one. Uh, so we'll be selling, again, we finally got it back and the store was gone for a while. Uh, we're selling uh, a diluted 4 to 1 version, diluted, uh, or you can you know, buy it concentrated if you want. I don't like to dilute crap. I wish it would just come done, and so that's why we decided to make a, 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 a diluted version for you, make it, make it easy. So what I have on my cart, a little Hazzat Assistant. I haven't decided about this thing, if I like it yet or not. It's got pretty good casters. So I got my... Notice I've got some prototype here. I've got my, uh, these are hopefully they finally, we can finally get them to ship these puppies. So I've got the Detail Factory large brush. Uh, this will be for deconning. I got this guy. This is number, th you know, one of three that exists. So these will be coming soon. So a squeezable press all. So this is decon soap, OG decon soap. I should have gone through all the products, shouldn't I? Um, we have Tarex, which notice there's no label because Tarex leaches the bottles. Our next step is to get fluorinated bottles so it won't leach through. And our last step is to get this freaking thing figured out for Brick Buster. I've got some iron remover and some plastics dressing. So that's the uh, hyper dressing four to one. So some of this stuff I probably won't need on the car. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to need any Tarex, but I have it in the spray bottle. Ulex is like the sledgehammer. Tarex is the more gentle, you know, tar and, and, uh, and adhesive remover. I've got a pair of, uh, of, of Rag Company scrubber packs. I don't know why they do it in a two pack. I only want one, but uh, I have two here. I have, you know, one on the cart. Green Star, which I don't think we're gonna need for this project, but an all purpose cleaner in case you needed to clean up like door jams or something like that. I got a clay bar, which I'm probably also not gonna need because these have been garage kept and pretty well maintained. Iron Buster, which we are going to use, uh, which I also have in my solo sprayer here. So we got Iron Buster. We've got uh, De OG Decon Soap, which we'll use to wash. Engine Cleaner, which I'm gonna throw in a foam cannon. The engine cleaner is what we're gonna use to clean the engine. Uh, and then uh, I have some beater towels. And like I said, P21S and McKees. McKees will be using for, as a clay lube. So we'll bring this with us. So I'm not gonna clean the wheels and tires because I'm gonna remove those and I'll do that separately. We're gonna clean the barrels and we're gonna coat those and all of that. I haven't decided what I'm gonna put on this. Probably just, I may just do CSL. I was thinking about waxing the Sport Evo. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna, um, we'll assess after we, after we start polishing. So bucket filler. We had to take out our, I had our, we made this little whip here. I think it's gonna work. I think we're okay. Uh, but this is for the K, um, KWS 700. Is that one my model number? Yeah, KWS 700. This is the 20 millimeter Krenzel pump. Looks a little different. Look at the head on the active. Look at the head on this. <laughs> it's a little different there. Uh, I haven't tested the active out yet. Uh, I know it does pretty decent numbers. Um, so we'll, we'll play with that at some point coming up here. All right, so let me turn some water on and make sure nothing explodes. Like made my little whip here just to hold me over. And okay, we're good. I haven't used this since we took the, the DI system out, which we took to Fred's in, uh, in California. All right, we're good. Let's pull out our hose. I finally took an OG hose home, sitting underneath my pressure washer, finally. I'm losing this building in a couple of weeks, so May 31st is when we're done with this. And uh, so I wanted to get these detailing things done before we uh, turn the building back over to the yarn lady. So we have to tear all this stuff out, fill in the hole. But the rest of the building is completely empty. All right, so I'm just gonna dump a little bit of engine cleaner in the foam cannon. I didn't bother to go get a press all out, but I, uh, we're making a new label for engine cleaner. So I should have that soon. So undiluted in the foam cannon. These foam cannons have a 1.5 millimeter orifice on it because of the, uh, the big pressure washer. That'll be sufficient. That's probably more than I need. I mean, you could say, again, the Griot's engine cleaner is a luxury. The, uh, I just like how it works. 
I like how it smells, I like how it functions. But you can just use Green Star. Just put Green Star in there. You can even dilute it if you wanted to. So let's do a little, uh, I'm gonna have to go short gun here. And we're gonna manage our water on the uh, engine bay. This is the new shorter version of the Mossmatic. So now I don't have to try to pinch down and reach it. We made it shorter so that way you can holster the wand and not have to uh, try to grab it. Wow, that feels kind of lean in comparison to my uh, double Krenzla. The other problem with this, not problem, but the advantage of the double Krenzla is this kick, watch. Because it holds like 3000 PSI in the line. Like if I put if I put the pressure gauge on here, it'll hold over 3000 PSI and so I get that initial kick. We only hold about 1000 PSI with double Krenzlas, so or double w, double uh, 1322s. So I prefer that now over this guy. Plus notice this one doesn't turn off and it's a lot louder. Before you start freaking out, remember the car drives in the rain. As long as the air intake isn't siphoning up water, I mean, you've seen land, Range Rovers or Land Rover, Land Cruisers cruising through, you know, water up to the, you know, up to the windshield with a snorkel. As long as you're not sucking in air, then you're fine. So don't freak out. Naturally, do this on a cool, on a cold end. This isn't particularly dirty. It's more, I'm more interested in getting the uh, hyperdressing on it. But since we're going to do hyperdressing, I don't want to get a bunch of dust all over the place. So that's why we're going to do a quick little cleaning. I like to do this now. Like, I think this is the best time to do this because look at all the uh, crap I'm getting all over the car. So I want to do this right before I decon the car. So that way I don't have to get it all freaking dirty. Or I don't get engine goop or I don't mess up my, my, my fresh coating. So I always do this as part of the decon process. It's why I have it in the decon package. This is a new addition for me. You've never seen me use a brush before, have you? <laughs> this is a new, a new step here. I'm not much of a brush guy, but maybe I should be one. Now, if this was like really dirty, which none of my cars ever are, I'd be maybe doing a little bit more work, but this is more of just a nice superficial cleaning. This is the concept that Drew and I came up with. Just do what I do if, it, if I had bought this car. Maybe I'm not going to spend as much money as I normally would on it, but just do my thing. This is kind of the dream, though. I get to experience the uh, a car that I most certainly won't love. I don't think I want. I don't have to come up like this car is ninety nine thousand nine fifty. You know, it's a hundred grand for this car. I'd probably spend another 30 grand on it, 50 grand on it in parts and replacement pieces. And, you know, EAG gets you like 90% of the way there. To get to 100%, or my 100%, requires a lot of modifications. And, you know, this is a collector car. But, you know, if I bought this just like my E36, I'd freaking do whatever I wanted to do to it. I'd modify it. And who the heck wants a stock M3? I sure as heck don't. I just want a good base. And so for a guy like me, EAG gets me that base. I'm paying for that, but I'm cool with that. I'm telling you guys, you guys that get real angry about this, you know, there's some people that are just cheap, right? Nothing you can do about that. But I'm telling you that when you get to a certain level in life, time is money. Companies like EAG make my life easier. And so I can get a car that's 
again, 90% of the way there instead of 30% of the way there, and then I've got to do all the work. Even my, uh, my E92, that's just staining in the paint. Even my E92 that had, what did I have, 800 miles on it? I spent months on it, taking it to the spot, taking it to the level I wanted to take it. Good. Nice and clean. So now, we take four to one hyper dressing and we spray it on, wet. This is another reason why I do this now, because I don't want this, uh, it's gonna get on the fenders a bit here. I don't wanna get it all over the place. You know, there's a lot of those sprays that are permanent. Don't freaking mess with that, I'm telling you. You don't wanna go there. This is a really simple dressing that works really well. It's a uh, walk away dressing. Works really well on all the black plastics and stuff. I'll do like a little bit of a wipe down after the fact. But those ones that you spray in an aerosol can will freaking ruin your engine bay. Ask me how I know. That's it. It's gonna get any easier than that. Okay, we're ready to decon now. So this thing closes like that. And then you push from here. I like that. That's the coolest part of the whole car. All right, so now we think about decontamination in three steps. We have soap, so we have to clean the car, get the soap, get the dirt, debris, and everything off the car. Hopefully we can do a little bit of stripping you know, if we can, so that's where the decon soap comes in. Second step is going to be to chemically decontaminate. Credit Todd Cooper Ryder for turning me on to calling it chemical and mechanical decontamination. Todd from Esoteric. So, um, the chemical part would be iron removing, so we're going to remove iron, which you're not going to be able to see squat on this red car. Uh, and then the final step will be mechanical, where we're actually using an abrasive. So we're going to use the Greg Company sponge and a clay lube. Uh, and that's what we're going to do to do the... This pop top is terrible. This is my first time using this. The squeeze, the squeezeability of this is amazing. We're trying to get these ordered. It's hard to find a top that fits this thread. So we're gonna have to find a better one because I don't like how slow that, the orifice on there needs to be bigger. So I'm putting 150 milliliters or more. Basically just go to the first line on this. Now on this, because I'm polishing, I'm not gonna do a pre-wash. This should do my pre and post and all the washing I need done. So put some in the bucket as well. Wow, this, this is literally the first time I've used this. The squeezability of this is incredible. I just need to find a better dispensing top. One that isn't white, and two that has a little less restrictive dispensing. That's freaking cool. Coming soon. Even like, this is LDPE, squeezable LDPE. The other problem we have to figure out is how the heck we're gonna put a label on this thing. All right, I'm gonna rinse the car first. So when I'm doing decon soap, I'm gonna rinse first. If I'm doing a pre-wash, like the built hamber, built hamber deal is done. Tommy and team have started creating the packages, so a pre-order should be up by the time you watch this video within days, hopefully maybe a week or so. Probably shouldn't get this wet. All right, so let me get my wand. Let's rinse it off. So as I was saying, the 
pre-wash stage, I want to get it directly on the paint without being diluted anymore. With this, I want to rinse the car first and then we're going to do a single wash step. If this was dirtier, maybe I'd pre-wash, but I'm also going to be polishing. Clearly some sort of wax or something's on the surface. Not really contaminated. I may be able to skip the, uh, the clay part, or the scrubber part. We're actually gonna have uh, Drew and the EAG team, they're gonna send their guys to me. And we're gonna train them up OG spec. We're gonna teach them the OG process, my process. This would be the first, no, not the first. I did polish a single stage. Uh, I think that Cobra I did was single stage. First major single stage project. The paint's in good condition, just needs to really be cleaned up. Can't wait, I'm close. Weira, the Weira packages, the Weira Koken has that. Packages are gonna be coming here shortly. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll show you under the lights. I'm sure it looks freaking fantastic out here in the shade, but it's, um, it, it needs some work. This, uh, ooh, yeah, P21S. I don't even know if I really need it. All right, let's foam it. It's gonna be kind of sad to lose this garage. I put a lot of work into this thing. Nice. Yeah. Certainly weren't people foaming cars like this in 1989. Shoot, we weren't even doing this in 2009. We're gonna test out some new decon soaps, but this stuff is still really freaking good. I gotta talk to Scott, I, I don't know. Maybe we'll take this down and uh, dry ice clean it as well. I'll ask Drew if he minds. Some people get squirrely about the uh, Cosmoline leaving it on there, which is freaking stupid. You wanna get that crap off. Take my extra soap, dump it in my bucket. All new versions of the bucket package is coming. The first one we're going to do is going to be blue and white. It's going to be sick. Matty version. Second one's going to be gray and black, which will be part of the uh, garage giveaway. We have some really great ideas of the garage giveaway coming out here. We'll, uh, we'll have Charlie's series coming out in the next week or so. The uh, next garage giveaway is going to be July 15th through the August 31st. And this time we're going to have all kinds of freaking cool stuff for you to buy. I think you're going to be pretty pumped about that. I, I know I'm pumped. But we're going to have some other versions of the bucket package. Yeah, this soap is so slick. It's still so good. So this, this soap is derived, for those of you that are new here. First of all, I always hit this leg every time. Big blob of soap. But the, uh, this is derived from, uh, it was uh, called Chemical Guy Citrus Red, which was a stupid name because it's actually alkaline, the soap, slightly alkaline. And uh, I had 
used it for years and then they discontinued it and then they were making it just for me and then they told me to get lost and then eventually I found my friend uh, Jimbo Balaam, the uh, auto detailing podcast, got me the original formula and uh, we've been making it ever since. So Proje, which I think was one of the original chemical guys blenders, makes it for us. So this is, uh, this is pretty typical of, uh, and this is what we're going to change. This was pretty typical of an EAG car where it's, it's really it mechanically sound. Um, you know, they, they have to make a living. They had to make, Eric had to make a living. And so you know, they can't just go spend indiscriminately like I do when I get my car. And so for most people, it's like amazing. You know, the cars were really well sorted like this car for most people would be good to go and i'll show you when we get under the lights again it's like you know for most people we'd be fine but for us og types we're gonna want to get it to that next level where the paint looks freaking awesome instead of just okay from 10 feet away and so that's what we're gonna do i'll put the uh paint meter on it, which I don't know what that's going to tell me, but other than we'll look at some various areas in the car, make sure there isn't any spot that's ultra low in comparison to the rest of it. I have a Defelsco. I'm trying out a uh, everyday watch. I went to the mall to uh, Mall Millennia in Orlando to try to establish a relationship with the Rolex people. See if I can actually get start to get watches, get allocations for them. And uh, I went in the uh, Tudor store. And I bought a Tudor. I really like it. It's kind of nice to have a, a watch that someone isn't going to chop my arm off when I'm, you know, walking down the street if they really wanted it. Because it's like a third the cost of a Rolex. And I kind of like having a. Uh, it's more comfortable having a fabric band. Just wanted to see if I've been wearing it every day the last three or four days, so I must like it. It's certainly a clean car, man. So, again, both of these cars. I guess including my E36 are for sale. Everything's for sale. By the way, if you're new here, wash top down. Don't do what I'm doing here. The car's really clean. It's just more dusty than anything. But if you're not washing in a super clean car, make sure you wash. Do the, do the top panels first and then go do the bottom. I guess E30s, they don't have the problems that E36s do, right? With milky trim and all that stuff. Yeah. So in many ways, these are better built. Doesn't seem to, they don't seem to have door card issues and stuff either. It's almost like uh, I, I would wager that with well, these cars, they probably, I don't know if they lost money on them, but they didn't make as much money, you know, and they cut cost on the E36. I can see that versus the components on my E36. Okay, so we're gonna rinse it, put an iron remover on it, which is probably gonna be a waste of time. We'll leave these buckets here. If it is coated, it'd be art to shine, is what they coated all their cars. Drew wasn't sure. It sure does look and feel like it, so we'll have to remove that, which will come off pretty easily. So, hate to disappoint you, but the mechanical decon, it's unnecessary. 
There's zero contamination on this. It's kind of a shame to have to redo it, but they probably just did a single step paint correction, which didn't really correct very much, and then coated it. This is the uh, newest Solo 260 sprayer. Freaking sweet. I don't like the freaking pump spray. I got the Marilex in there. We have the Marilex in the stores, but I don't really use them. I like this. Again, we'll do the wheels and tires when I remove them. I'll do those separately, separate video. This is a PNS Iron Buster. Again, this is probably a waste of time, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. The decon dream come true, you turn it into a two-step process instead of three. I like that. Bad for product sales, but good for my uh, energy distribution. So what I used to do back when I had a job, I would decon on Friday night, so I'd try to leave the office early. You know what I forgot to do is clean the door jams, but I'll wipe those all out. I think they were clean. But I would like to, I would always um, leave the office early, decon the car on Friday, let the car sit overnight, you know, dry it off, let it sit overnight, wake up early on Saturday. So I used, you know, probably, what, 500, 600 milliliters of, of solution, 20 ounces or so. Sometimes, I'd, like if I knew that this had lots of contamination on, I would put some gloves on and I would go around the car. The, uh, then Saturday I would do the polishing, Sunday finish the polishing and try to get the coating or wax on it by the end of the weekend and then go back to work. Especially when I only had one car. I don't know if I could see it if, even if I tried. We'll leave it on for five minutes or so and then spray it off. So we certainly won't be one-stepping this car because I'm gonna have to grind this coating off of it. Again, I'd be fine leaving the coating on, but the car is frickin' scratched up, so they just coated over top of the scratches. That's it. Turn that off, put this away. This is why you want an on-wall system, people. Makes life so much easier. It's like that, donezo. Put my buckets away, we'll blow the car off. Wait until you see what I got planned as a new building for our wash bay. We're gonna have an indoor and outdoor wash bay. Because I can, it's gonna be sick. That always freaks people out. <laughs> Some people. I'm pretty sure, we, I'm pretty sure we still have these. Uh, somebody dropped mine, I gotta tear it apart, and fix it. Um, the 580 is the best blower from Ego and they're discontinued but we still have them. Maybe it was just wax on here because I freaking nuked whatever we, uh, whatever was on here. It might've just been waxed. Yeah, that's not coated anymore. Or, yeah, no coating. That's good. Cause I mean, I, I can tell cause the water's parked. Well, that's great news for the polishing. Well, that was easy. It was easier than a regular wash. I like that. It's my kind of, my kind of work. All right, so we gotta figure out how to get this thing on the lift.
because we have hyper dressing on the engine, we don't want to get it hot. Just wanted to get it in here. This is great. I knew this was a great idea. Let me see. <clears throat> yeah. 2,600 pound car, that's, that's the nice part about it. I like these. And the other one's right there. Nothing like jacking up a uh, irreplaceable $100,000 car. Piece of cake. Nice. So now I don't want to use any kind of drying aid because I don't want to add any protection the surface. But what I am going to use is a little McKees. Just because how grabby the paint was. No, no use in adding a bunch of scratches. So we'll use this as a drying aid, which is a surfactant that doesn't leave anything behind. And I don't need to be super critical about drying because we're going to let it sit here overnight. Let it dry. So I won't do anything to the engine bay until tomorrow. I'll take a peek at it, wipe off any excess flat, but generally hyper dressing is just a wipe on, wipe off. Yeah, this was definitely waxed because there was certainly something you guys saw. There was certainly something on the surface when we started and there ain't nothing on it anymore. It's dead so that they could decon soap. So that's, you know, my decon soap is from an era of waxing, you know, where it would strip the wax off. I still like it because it doesn't matter what you're using. You're not stripping a coating off. You got to polish a coating off. So I still like it for the decon stage, just in a, just a normal cleanup. We'll play with the CarPro D scale and some of the others. Bradley's Decon Soap from Armor Detail Supply. So we'll try out some others just to confirm. Let's see how it goes. So then tomorrow what I'll do is I'll tape the car. I don't like to tape it now. I could if I had to just use the air compressor and just go around and dry it up. But usually there's a little extra water drips and stuff like that. So again, extremely well-maintained car. We're hoping to get Drew's team up to the standard of uh, OG spec, so that way you can get the car at 95%. But still, you know, EAG is going to have limited time in that you can't just spend $100,000 on a $100,000 car like I would. They've got to strike that balance of making money and giving you a car that's great. Plus, I don't know that I would want them to do it all, you know? I want to I wanna be able to do some of the stuff myself. But I think Drew's intention is to uh, create a, an additional service where, hey, you want the, you want the Matt Mormon spec level car where every single thing has been replaced, like my E36. I think he intends to create that as well, create that option for people. I need a red car in my life. Lotus Amira, it's gonna be red. I, should, I wish I would've gotten that Carmine Red GT3 RS. That's what I wish. I need another car, like I need a hole in the head though, so. So we'll show you what we're dealing with here. Again, I'm not gonna be able to get this car to 100%, maybe 80. It's mostly original paint. I think this one has a few painted panels. We'll figure that out when we put the meter on it. 
but you know, I'm not going to be able to just grind away forever. I have to strike a balance of making it look a lot better, but not blowing through it. Luckily, if I did, they have their own paint shop, so <laughs> I'll send it on home. It's kind of weird in that, you know, I'm not, a, I, I'm not, I don't detail other people's cars for, you know, for a living, and so this is a weird feeling. And then I kind of have carte blanche here, but it's still not my car. So I have to kind of decide how far to take it. I know you guys that are detailers have to make that decision every day. I tell you what though, this thing is gonna frickin' pop. When I get this done, the photos are gonna be wild. I have a bunch of Meguiar's pads. I replaced my Meguiar's with, uh, with Rupes. So I got a bunch of Meguiar's pads we're gonna ruin. This is, you know, single stage. Everything's gonna be pink. Make sure I blow everything out outdoors. It's gonna make a big mess. I'm interested to see what a one step does, what, what perfect finish on a foam pad will do. I wouldn't be surprised if wool works best on this as well. So we're gonna play with some, some test spots. We're gonna remove quite a bit of surface level oxidation. This, this red, although I'm sure on camera looks great already, is gonna look even better. I'm gonna gain depth, clarity that it doesn't have currently. And then, you know, getting the wheels and tires off, I'll rebalance them. Coat the wheels with armor, uh, Wheel coating. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Hope you hope you're here for the ride on this series. This is gonna be cool. I would wager that the front bumper has been repainted. Because it looks too darn good to not have been. I'm a darn solo convert. You know, this is the original, this is the old one. A new one is what I use with the iron remover, but it's a really nice experience. Batteries seem to last forever, too. Just imagine what this fender is going to look like when it's all dialed. It's going to be sick. And then I'm going to do it all over again on the Sport Evo. I think uh, if you're thinking of buying an E30, you're not going to have to pay any more and you get me to do what I'm doing to it. I drove this one. You'll, if you, you know, again, go watch the uh, first drive video. This car is pretty freaking well sorted already. So I think I, I think I'd give this one my, you know, the stamp of approval. I'll give you some more assessing, but you might want to call Drew and say, hey, I want this car, but don't tell Matt yet. <laughs> Let him do what he's gonna do, and then I'll take it. Especially if you don't wanna do all the work or don't know how to do the work or don't wanna do it, don't care to do it, don't have anybody else to do it. Am I allowed to take the M3 badge off? <laughs> I don't think that'll work. I'm the only one that doesn't like the M3 badge on. <laughs> So, interior, wheels, tires, maybe dry ice cleaning, glass, leather. We're gonna dial the whole thing in. So I hope you're along for the ride. And guess what? And we're gonna do it all again on the E30, the other E30 Sport Evo. So, all you guys that like the stinky old cars, we're gonna do some de-stinkying. <laughs> By the way, the OG scent, it's like I'm five days into my, uh, my you, go, you go stick your head in my uh, Evo. Oh, I did leather and pine in there. It smells, it's still there. Are you using the room spray or what are you using? Yeah, 
just the, the, the room spray, the same stuff Fred was using. Like his car smelled amazing. I'm like, man, the griots, you must have just sprayed the griots. He's like, no, I'm using your leather scent. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm using yours. It lasts like a month. I'm like, holy crap. So the room spray is going to become the car spray. It's freaking good. You guys might want to go buy it now before I run out. I'm going to, uh, it's the, uh, it's on their Destination OG under fragrances. It's the room spray. And if you spray like four or five spritzes on your carpet or maybe spray it on like a, like a color lock sponge, throw it underneath the front seat. It's freaking great. Yeah, we got some de-shining to do the leather. The leather repair. We'll do a little bit of, uh, a little bit of dye as well on this bolster here. Clean that up. Make this car awesome. Awesomer. I should always put the car on the lift after washing it. This is bad. This is great. I'm gonna have to bend over. And that's the thing, the E30 and the E36. Shuts differently. Part of that's because the door weighs 75 pounds, but I do have, so put, help me out in the comments. What modifications? Drew said he'd be down, do some modifying. What should we do? I don't know this platform very well. Intake, exhaust, what's the suspension, brakes? What's the, uh, what's the, what's the plan? Oof, that's a, uh, that's a lot of dumb, dumb wives getting, I'm sorry. I mean, a lot of dumb people getting in the car, freaking gouging it. Let's see how dumb the guy is over on this side. Can't feel it, so be able to clean it up a little bit with that paint. There's probably not a lot of paint right there. Clean the trunk. And we're deconned up. Decon done. I'm gonna take the wheels off. I like this kind of trunk where that's the reach from the top. There's a little functionality, but Drew says he has a buddy with a 12,000 mile E36 Euro engine for me. I want it. Swap mine. Might be, might be, might be considering that. Yeah, it's a yeah. the whole thing, the engine trans. Man, we're gonna make this car look freaking fantastic. Every time we get to do this on a car, this is like a dream that I don't have to own this thing. And I get to just figure it out. It's freaking awesome. All right, check these guys out. I'm doing my, my thing here. These things are freaking sick. The Koken version where they, these little plastic things that always get jacked up. You just buy like a dozen of them and they're easily replaceable. All the Schwabens and the others that I always buy always get messed up. And then it's like the perfect length, not for the Fifty-five, The golf cart I'm ordering has 15s on it. So I'm gonna grab this thing. Oh yeah. Factory Bilsteins. We need, uh, we need an exhaust for this guy. That's what we need. Out there, it's a good user experience. That's what I'm chasing.
right, it's a job well done. We pull the, uh, pull the other cars in, but that's a wrap on the decon. This is what I like to do on a decon. Get the wheels and tires off, deal with the wheels another day. Keep the, uh, keep the process fun. If you're fortunate enough to have another car, if you do little steps at a time, I find it just makes the process a lot more enjoyable instead of freaking killing myself. <clears throat> All right, so that's a wrap on the decon. Go to obsessedgarage.com, get your decon stuff, get your car cleaned up for the, uh, for the summer. And uh, you can follow along on this series. I'm gonna show you the rest of the process. And we're gonna make an E30, a really nice E30. We're gonna make it great. We'll see you, uh, see you on episode three. Thanks for watching.